There's been a recent study that shows that a purposeless rat gets easily addicted to cocaine. A rat that has rat-like things is less likely to get addicted to cocaine. Well, the same thing exists in people. And we are now 35 seconds into this, and I hope that you follow this message along because it pertains to you and it pertains to everybody out there. And the facts are showing that people can only hold on for about six seconds at a time. That rule used to apply to kids that were four, five, six years old. Well, people have less time uh, to focus in on things because they are multitasking because they are on their phones and they are listening to messages such as this. They're on Instagram and they're causing wreaking all kinds of havoc on their lives. And I'll explain this in a second. Before I get to all that, before I sound like the old guy beating up phones, I, I wanna make something perfectly clear. I built an empire off of social media and I built an empire off of my freaking phone, literally by just using my phone and my iPad at Starbucks. Talk about the American dream. That's the American dream times a thousand. But what I talk, talk about today is how I'm continuing hearing people asking me the question of how do you not compare yourself to other people? And this can be a very deadly trap and we're all guilty of it because we're all peanut butter and jealousy of somebody else, right? We all get jealous of people. It happens from time to time. We all see what others have. How do we stop doing that? I don't really know if we can stop doing that, but I do think that we can slow ourselves down from doing that. And here's a couple of ways that you can do that. Here's a couple of ways you can stop looking at him. You can stop looking at her, wondering why you don't have the big butt that she has, wondering why you don't have the biceps that he has, or the money that he has, or the car that he has, or the house that he has, or the wife that he has. Each and every post that comes from this individual just hits you deeper and deeper and deeper. And even if you like them, and even if you're inspired by them, uh, you're sometimes also muted by them and you're sometimes also feeling distant and feeling insignificant, which we'll get to that in a second as well. In my opinion, the number one key to things like this is to be busy. If you ain't got shit to do, then the only thing that you have to do is worry about what other people are doing. And you're going to be investigating and looking at what other people are doing. If you're busy and you're into your own stuff and you got your own things going on, you have your own positive things going on, you're working towards a goal. You have a purpose filled life. You have a purpose going on in your life. If you have a purpose, then you will not have to worry about what other people's purpose is. You will not have to worry about what other people's intentions are because you'll probably be too freaking busy working to even worry about it. I got some suggestions here that can help you with that. You're gonna wanna start to set some goals. Now we went over this before on the podcast. We've gone over this time and time again. And if you set some goals, that can help you to have a purpose by setting some goals that can help you to have a purpose. Set some goals, uh, say that you wanna be a certain amount of weight by the end of the month, whether it's, whether it's being more jacked and being bigger or whether it's being skinnier and being smaller, um, or you wanna re reach a certain destination with your strength, you wanna be able to run faster by this month or that month, um, you want your grades to come up, you want this and that to happen, and then write down three actions that are associated with actually making those goals happen. You will be so damn busy and so damn tied up with that, you will not have the same amount of time to pour into looking at what everybody else does. Also, something I decided to do is I decided to delete social media. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, I deleted all social media from my phone. It does not exist on my phone anymore. The only thing I have that's social is YouTube. And I do respond to some of the texts and some of the uh, comments that I see on there. But I got rid of Instagram and I got rid of it for good reason. I got rid of it for this because there's uh, severe cases of FOMO going around these days. The fearing, fear of missing out is causing people higher levels of anxiety. Anxiety is through the roof, so is depression, and so is suicide. All these things are up. And the re in my opinion, in my old ass opinion of 41 years old, 
the reason why these things are up is because the phone and because people are looking at other people's lives wondering why they're not them and wondering and also there's a lot of aside from that aside from all that there's also just a lot of negativity out there what I want you to also work on practicing and, and also have perspective into how you're viewing some of these people first of all understand that you're seeing 3% of their life you're not seeing, seeing the other 97% of their life that was a struggle or that is currently a struggle. I've met all these people and I can assure you that they are all a mess. Every single person in the fitness industry that I've met, almost every single person that I've met is a mess. They have severe depression. They have severe problems. It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that, that you need to be perfect but I'm just telling you, their life is not what they're sharing with you all the time. A lot of these people are not transparent. A lot of these people are not sharing everything that they should be sharing with you. I want you to start to breathe some life into some situations. I want you to start to work on being more positive. And men, we need mentors and we need leaders. We need people that are gonna stand up to the plate and hit a home run in the bottom of the ninth. The ladies need the same thing. But I'm just speaking dude to dude right now. I'm just speaking mano a mano. I'm just speaking man to man. Men are so weak right now that they can't even walk past a bowl of potato chips without dipping their face into it. We have no discipline. We got no heart. We are a weak nation. We are a weak country. We are not strong. We are fat. We are obese. And we got ourselves into this situation. And we need to get ourselves out of it. And the way we're going to get ourselves out of it is by making ourselves stronger. Stop talking about de being depressed and having anxiety and having and your back hurts and all these stupid things. Your back hurts because you're not training. You're depressed because you're thinking about what other people are doing and not thinking about what you should be doing. You're not moving. You're not nutritionally charged enough to even know how you're supposed to feel. You haven't walked around the block in two years. You know that old saying of eat an apple a day, keep the doctor away? You're not doing that either. You don't have healthy enough practices to even judge whether you have me real mental illness or not. I'm not going to make light of mental illness and say that it doesn't exist. But I'm going to say that in today's world of people eating garbage all the time and not sleeping, that it doesn't really exist. And that what we're seeing is we're seeing fake accusations towards people having some of these things. And so now people have all kinds of crazy anxiety about what this person's doing, that person's doing. I'm never going to be like them. I'm never going to be skinny like that girl. I'm never going to be skinny like that guy. Of course you're not. Because you ain't doing shit about it. And you need to step up to the plate. You need to also start to breathe life into things, breathe life into situations, breathe life into, into sentences and paragraphs that come from other people. People say shit that doesn't fly in your world, make sure that you let them know. Have the courage, stand up to them and say, you know what, that doesn't work for me. I don't like what you're saying. But you can also spin it in a more positive way. And when somebody says something that you don't like or that you don't agree with, you can say, or somebody, somebody, let's just say somebody comes at you all fired up, right? They're all fired up and they come at you and they say, you know what? My wife's being such a bitch. They come out, everyone always whispers that, right? Bitch, because they don't want their wife to actually hear it. My wife's being such a bitch, right? They say it like that. That's that old Key and Peele skit. Bitch. Anyway, somebody comes at you and they're all fired up and all concerned like that. What are they actually trying to tell you? What are they actually trying to share with you? By the way, what is that? <laughs> what are they actually trying to share with you? They want you to say, oh my God, dude, what happened? Even from a, even from a guy, guys want guys to be more sensitive towards their needs. Hey, buddy, you'll look like this. Sorry, put these shades down. Didn't even know I had them on there for a second. Hey man, I heard what you said. Um, is it really that bad? Is your wife okay? Is there anything I can help you with? Um, you want to talk about it more? Breathe some life into it. Breathe some positivity into it. Tell your friend that you're there for them. Be kind-hearted. Be nice. What's wrong with being nice? 
It can make the world go round, can it? What does this have to do? What does this have to do with trying to stop worrying about uh, other people? It has everything to do with it because when you invest time in other people, you feel fulfillment and you feel better about yourself. You feel significant. You played a role in that per person's life and you may have changed their life and you may have changed their perspective. Say, oh my God, man, I I'm sorry that happened to you. Is there anything I can do to help? You, hey, you know what, man? Let's get out of here. Let's go grab a cup of coffee and let's talk about it. I've been in some weird situations with my family members too. How hard is that? Somebody comes to you and say, man, you know what? My brother's drinking again, man. I don't know what's going on. Don't take that lightly. If it's through a text, tell somebody, say, you know what? I want to talk to you about that in person. Next time I see you, let, let's make sure that we talk. Don't let me forget. I want to talk to you about that in person. I want to communicate with you on that. Let's make some time for that. It's an important thing. So in order for you to get over these hurdles of worrying about what she's doing and what he's doing and all this other crap, you're, you need to have purpose. You need to breathe life into other things and be more positive and you need to be significant. One simple way to be significant is to do nice crap for other people, to be good to other people. Be good to those who are good to you. Be good to those who are good to you. When people are mean to you and people are rude to you, don't be rude back to them. Disengage from them. Let them know you're not going to participate in their bull crap and start to find other people that are more positive. We got to have more positive thoughts. We have to have more positive action. Remember what I said earlier about those goals. Set those goals up. People that are busy are too busy to be worried about all this other crap that other people are doing. Do I sometimes get jealous of other people? Of course I do. Do I see social media? Have I seen social media before and seen a post from somebody with a new car or somebody uh, getting on a private jet or whatever it might be and been jealous before? Hell yes, I've been jealous. Um, who hasn't been jealous of the rock, right? We've all been guilty of that. We're going to be jealous of other people. You can't actually really truly stop it. But if you're satisfied with what's going on in your life, if you feel ful fulfilled and you feel good inside as a person, you won't have to worry about what they're doing. Plus, on top of all this, this is why it's so important to train not just your muscles, but to train your body, your mind, your core, not your core as in like your abs and stuff like that, to train your spirit, your body, mind, and spirit. You want everything to all be connected so that you are strong enough and you have the power that when anything comes at you, you can handle it. Do more, be more. Do more, become more. The more that you can do, the more that you can handle. And think about when something so insignificant comes at you, insignificant comes at you, how little it will really mean to you when it comes from somebody that doesn't mean shit to you. And when it comes from somebody who's not putting in the work that you're putting in. Somebody wants to say something about me on social media about this bodybuilding thing that I'm doing? <laughs> Laughable laughable they have no idea how much work I put in over the last nine or ten weeks I challenge anybody in the world to tell me that they've worked they've worked as hard as I have in the last nine weeks I don't care if it's Phil Heath or whoever I have put in the time I have put in the work now I haven't put in the body work that those guys have I'm not comparing myself in that way uh, under any circumstances whatsoever and I'm not on that level I'm not putting myself uh, up there in terms of that but in this last nine week period, when it comes to doing all the work that I was supposed to do, with all the stuff that was sent to me by my coach, I did it all to a T. 90 minutes of cardio, I was supposed to do it, I did it. I was supposed to work out three times in one day, I did it. I was supposed to work out twice in one day, I did it. I was supposed to eat seven meals a day, I did it. I was supposed to eat half a cup of oats for the day, I did it. I was supposed to eat 20 egg whites in a day, I did it. I was supposed to have chicken breast and egg whites and steak and salmon every single day, I did it. I was supposed to have one protein shake a day after every workout, I did it. 
Whatever it was, whatever was supposed to happen, eight hours of sleep, I did it. I made sure it all got done each and every day. Gallon of water, boom, check. You can check it all off the list. So what you have to say and what you're doing matters to me less because I'm pouring my heart and soul into everything that I'm doing. The reason I got rid of social media was because it was slowing me down. And I suggest that you guys take some days off of it and take some time away from it and be a poster and stop worrying about what everybody else is posting all the time. I realize that I make money and I make my living off of some of these posts. But man, you guys got to slow down. You got to you got to start deleting people. People are worthless. Dude, I'm all over I'm all over YouTube and I have been for years and I've been silent for a long time. I haven't been put, pumping out messages like this in a very long time. And there's been a reason for it. It's because I've been honing in my craft and I've been getting better all the time at what I do. I'm getting better all the time at communicating. I'm getting smarter every single day. And now I'm ready to t tear this world apart and I'm ready to tear everybody a new asshole and tell you that there ain't anybody good to listen to and you should be listening right here to Mark Smelly Bell at Super Training 06 because there ain't shit else out there that's good enough. I'm telling you the God's honest truth. I've, I've listened to everybody. There's like five or six speakers and I can tell you who they all are. I'll share that with you in another video. And that's it, dude. There ain't nobody else. 10 years ago, 10 years ago, a decade ago, I was on top of my game in powerlifting, squatting over a thousand pounds every single week, bench pressing over 800 pounds every single week breaking all-time world records in single-ply powerlifting, breaking 275-pound weight class, multi-ply records, single-ply records, you name it, I was smashing all that shit. An 854-pound bench, 1,080 squat, the biggest total still to this day in California history. Go look up the USPF records. I still have the open record in the 308, and I still have the bench press record. I destroyed people. I ain't got no problem saying that. Other people would bench at the end of the flight, the strongest guys in the world, the strongest guys in these competitions, and they'd bench 650, they'd bench 670, and next up would be me, good old Mark Smelly Bell, the dumb fat kid from Poughkeepsie. And my opening bench would be 810 pounds, and I'd smoke every single one of them. Well, it's not 2008 anymore, is it? Where are all those lifters? What are all those people doing? I don't see them around here anywhere. <laughs> I don't see any of them on, on YouTube pumping out videos. And the guys that are currently popular on YouTube, <laughs> I didn't see them on YouTube when I was on YouTube, when YouTube first started. Super Training 06, Super Training is 12 years old. I started this account, this Super Training, the Super Training 06 account uh, in 2007. Before I knew about YouTube, I had something else called Put File. And here's my point. My point is, I don't want people to ever say, hey, hey man, uh, remember Mark Bell? Like, remember like he would do some of those cool things? Like, that was awesome when he, when he did that stuff 10 years ago. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm looking for. What I'm looking for is this. I want people to say, hey, remember Mark Bell, the power lifter? And then, and then, late, and then later on, he was an inventor. And then, and then he, became, he became a millionaire, I think, somehow. Something happened, something weird happened. And then, I'm um, not sure what happened from there. Uh, but then he stopped power lifting, and then he started bodybuilding. But instead of them having, having them talk about what I used to do, they're now talking about how good I am about what I'm currently doing. And I can tell you right now, there ain't nobody else in the game doing that. And that's because I'm focused on me. And I ain't focused on you. And I'm not focused on the girl next to you. I'm not focused on the guy next to you. I have the focus that is necessary. I like to do one thing at a time and complete one mission at a time. Remember this. You do not have to do anything spectacular to be loved. You do not have to do anything spectacular to have change. You just need to be consistent. Constantly 
consistent persistency. Is that a word? Persistence. <laughs> Constantly consistent. What do I always say? Grab him for roster. Put one foot in front of the other. Hey, we got a fan back there. Grab him for roster. Put one foot in front of the other. Step by step ferociously. Don't stop. Don't slow down for anybody. I got to get out of here because I got to eat my last meal of the day, which is some halibut, some asparagus, and some carrots. And I got to get, uh, get my ass up for some more cardio in the morning. You wanted to know how to avoid... Um, there, there's a fan again. You wanted to know... You wanted to know how to avoid uh, being, you know, focusing in on other people and worrying about what other people are doing and worrying about what other people are saying. I gave you all the tips and all the tools. Go ahead and shut down your social media. Don't forget that I said that. Get away from that shit from time to time. It would really help your brain. It would really help your body. Before I drop off, let's talk about this. What's reasonable? What's a reasonable amount of time for you to be on social media every single day. I'm gonna give you amount of time. I'm gonna say 90 minutes, okay? I'm gonna allow you 90 minutes, that's excessive I think. I'm gonna allow you 90 minutes. I want you to set your alarm when you go on it every day. 15 minutes here, 20 minutes there. Go to your clock on your phone. Even if you have a piece of shit Android, it will have it on there. Set that. Check it out. You got 90 minutes to be on there every day. And on the weekend, I'll give you 30 minutes. Strength is never a weakness. Weakness is never strength. I'm Mark Bell, and I'm out. Yeah.